My name is Anthony Stokes. I'm here to promote Intrusive Thoughts Issue 2, and you are watching and listening to Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. He has been on the show in the past. Obviously, if you have not seen his past interview, you are truly missing out because we talked about Intrusive Thoughts, Issue 1. We also talked about hot especially on Velma. We are joined by, of course, the ever-talented Anthony Stokes talking about Intrusive thoughts issue too. How are you doing today, man? Thank you for calling me talented. It's a, it's a boost I needed today, you know. Appreciate that. I'm tired, you know, but I mean that's the that's making comics, right? That's that's the that's the whole process. Thank you for having me. Uh, hey, anytime. You know, we're gonna have you back on next month as well, too. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and of course what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. Truthfully, I just love to write. I love storytelling. I love short form, long form storytelling, and I, I just like to make comics. You know, and I'm here. I'm here to just make a great interview from my book. And she starts issue two. I gotta promote constantly when it comes to these types of shows. Man. I know. <laughs> I but, know. but you're all you're on social media you're always doing the promotion you're always pushing you know creative talent that you're working with and you're always making the space a lot brighter when it comes to the the creative process so that's what i love about what you've been doing not only with the truce of thoughts and of course decay and and i can't wait to see tapper die as well too but why is intrusive thoughts issue two a, a comic that you wanted to get out this time around so the comic book is uh in large part about uh, like mental health issues and, you know, anxiety, depression, which I think, you know, a lot of people are feeling that, you know, these days. So it was catharsis for me to work on it. And I imagine, I hope it provides some catharsis reading it. That was the reason why we did it as well as like, I just like, I just wanted to keep telling the story, you know, obviously it's going to be a six issue series. So we're one third of the way through. So how has this helped your anxiety and depression uh, getting it onto the page? Has it really helped you from a mental perspective or and from a creative perspective? Creative perspective for sure. You know, I think uh, I think it I think it helps to work on something. You know, it, it has it fixed it? No, I'm still very anxious. Oh, oh, I'm constantly anxious. But as long as somebody takes away something. Mental health is something, obviously, that professional help you can get. There's obviously a lot of comics that are out there as well, too, including your your own here. What are some steps that you've taken in your creative process that has helped your your mental anxiety and issues? I mean, you know, but when you're making comics, it's so much of it is ignoring your mental health. Like, it's so much of just, like, signing up too much stuff, you know, spending a bunch of money, you know, overextending yourself. Um, I think one thing that I'm trying to do that's not directly related to comics, but uh, I'm trying to go to, so I, I, I took a trip with some friends up on, up a mountain. We went to the Appalachian trail. My friend was like, Oh, it's going to be like, it's going to be a, a tough one. And I get up there and it's like, my lungs are on fire. It's one of the most painful things I've ever done in my life, which she was like, Oh, you know, this is like a couple, like last month. And then she was like, I want to go in the, the least turn. <laughs> yellow and orange and I was like oh I gotta get in the gym so <laughs> I went to the gym today and I am in horrible horrendous shape so that's one thing is I'm trying to do is trying to balance you know taking care of yourself is part of the the process it needs to be part of the process yeah. um, so that's the main thing no, I completely agree. I, I, it's something that I think, especially if you're a writer or if you're a creative person, if you don't take the time to take care of yourself, no one else is going to. And I think that's something that we desperately need, not only from past the pandemic side of things, where that really kind of locked everyone down. And I think that locked everyone's mental state down as well, too, because we didn't know what was going to happen now that we're kind of sort of past that. I, I'm glad to see that you're taking steps for, for your health as well, too, physical and mental. Yeah, I'm trying to try to get better, you know, even if it's incrementally trying to like, you know, we don't want to get worse at the at the very least. You know, I've been drinking not like not that I was a crazy drinker. I've been drinking like less like I just keep less alcohol around the house. It makes it easier. And then as far as the uh, like what practice am I doing in, in terms of making comics is I have a process now, you know, as far as like what I need to do. Uh, for a book, you know, I, I've kind of like nailed down my process and I feel like having a regimen is super important because 
you know, you always know where you're headed if, if you have a, a schedule or regimen. Sorry, what's your what's your process? You it, so essentially, one th- the main thing that I've worked on is that if if I can't like if I'm burnt out or if I feel like I can't do something, I'm not gonna do it. Like that's something that it, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna beat myself up. You know, that's one thing. Two is I'm, I compartmentalize. Like there are series that I won't work on for months. You know, because that's not what demands my attention at that point. You know, it'll be in the back of your head. But I remember Stephen King was saying that he'll write a manuscript and he won't he'll put it away in a drawer somewhere and he won't touch for six months. And that's more or less what I've done by necessity because I'm working on too much stuff. But I think it also helps in that you're not super duper duper stretched in. And also when you come to something, you have a fresh, you have a fresh legs essentially when you approach it. Staying organized, I think, is the toughest part about being a creative person. Like you said, if you have too much on your on your plate or multiple plates spinning in the air type deal, there's only so much you can you can actively do because you can only work on one thing at a time. I mean, that's the the stress of being human, I guess. You can literally only work on one thing at one time. But uh, I'm sure if I try to tell you like how many books I'm working on currently. It comes up to be five or six, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot, you know, you want to make a lot of progress. I don't think I'm stretched too thin. I mean, in certain regards, yeah, but I don't regret because like we probably did the intrusive thoughts interview and back in my head was like, man, I, I'm not making the progress I need to make in my career. And then since then, uh, I don't know how many books I probably started like a dozen books, like we at work for hire. We, we, we you know, pitches you know um, um books that i create our own that i own you know co- collaboration so it's it's a good thing because I, I feel like it's easier to scale back than scale up so same with this show as well too i i've had to break it down to where i've only had interviews every saturdays more recently just because it just it's been too much for me especially with the show being on on atlanta radio as well too trying to get that scheduled i needed to take time for myself so i took two months off just to refocus my efforts on to getting this show to a level that i've always wanted to get it to and i'm glad that especially in comics as well too you have to take time for yourself and take time for your creative process. And I'm sure writing as well too, like pitches are, are difficult. <laughs> Anthologies are difficult. Submitting your, your works to the masses is I'm sure a very time consuming process. But when you get selected, I think that's even just more avenue saying, Hey, I'm on the right path. I'm doing exactly what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. I haven't had like a series picked up by a publisher yet. They, you know, fingers, you know, knock on wood, but I'm hoping we can, you know, hoping we can, cross that um on pretty soon here so intrusive thoughts too it's a mm-hmm. part of your six issue series which is i'm great to hear because i don't think we really did we finally or did we talk about that in in the first issue because i think you were just starting that creative process and getting it down i can't i, can't, I man that was a year ago which feels like <laughs> four years ago like comic book time is fast but yeah. I, I i don't know i mean i've known this is gonna be a six issue series i might even make the fifth and sixth issue i might make it like a like a larger issue i might make it like a super size issue so maybe five but at least five and uh, i know that for a while i actually wrote all the scripts for this last year 2022 so uh the idea has been done i i've used to write my series in it ideally i would have my series written out in advance in, in, in its entirety but as you start working on more series you also need to kind of see, you, you, you know, you need to be able to adjust the information as well, which is a huge thing. So like tap or die, I don't know how long, you know, the first issue did really well. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, like, what's the demand, you know, what's the demand for an issue two we're going to see. And if issue two does better than issue one, then, okay, well, now this can be a super long series, you know, or potentially, you know, we know at least three is coming out. So I'm I'm trying to just find that balance of like being flexible, but also planning ahead. Kickstarter campaigns are obviously are even more time consuming than it is to create an actual comic series as well, too, because yeah, of your limited amount of time you're doing to promote this as well. When is the campaign coming for uh, Intrusive Thoughts issue two? The campaign's active now. Oh, good. Yeah, campaign's active now. We're about 55% awesome. there. That's really yeah. good. What do you have on the go for the perks and for the 
the aspects of people that can support the comic. So I got I got multiple covers. I have four covers available, and then I have my entire uh, catalog, which is which is getting rather lengthy. I think like what what is it eight books now? Five, five seven, nine. This might be my tenth book. That's so awesome. my yeah, like a really a, a you know sizable catalog. You know, which was the goal really. We got that going. And uh, yeah, like I said, multiple covers and such. Really comic book heavy. Are you going to do this in a collective, uh, like a trade paperback once Intrusive Thoughts kind of completes? Is that going to be your end goal for the series? That is a goal with everything because the trade, you generally can make a lot. Uh, you get your a lot of the ROI back because there's, there's really no expenses. I mean, it's not no expenses, but more or less you're just paying for printing as opposed to inks. You know, inks and the art itself is the most expensive part. I would say, for me anyway. Once a series completes, if it's never put into a trade paperback and there's only just single issues just kind of around you, you don't get the full flow of it because what if an issue doesn't get printed again or what if you you happen to miss one issue? It's all these little limiting factors. The variant cover issue kind of came up more recently in, in the social media circles that I, I saw uh, which was rather, yeah. which was rather interesting. It's like I think the phrasing was, and I'm paraphrasing here. Why would you buy a variant cover of a comic only to put it into two sheets of plastic and never read what's on the inside? W- what's your take on the variant cover? I mean, it, on Kickstarter, it's necessary. I was talking to somebody who was like, "Do people really care about the variant covers?" And it's like, yeah, "What are we doing, bro? What are we? You may not have a taste for it, but that's an insane question. I mean." You can get a digital copy. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> well, this is stupidest. It's always the most simplest explanation. Like, there are cover. I mean, I, I don't know if I have any variants that I'll never take out the plastic, but there are there are like physical comics that I'll, I won't read because I have the digital. I'm like, like yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's that crazy. Like, just just read the PDFs. It's a non problem. <laughs> a lot of those, a lot of those going around, you know. You've been doing this for a while here. You've had a great run so far and you're continuing to create amazing comics and amazing series. For you, is the creative process helping you in any way, shape, or form, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, whether it's creative? Is it is it helping your being in some way, shape, or form? It's hurting physically, I'll be honest. I'll be a million percent honest with you. Like I, I work a 10-hour shift um, four days out the week. And then after that, I, I, I have, I have an interview or something. Sometimes, some days I have an interview. So it's like, it's almost like no window that it, to like work out or exercise or whatever, you know? And then when you do, I mean, at the end of a work day, you're just exhausted, you know, it, you're just, you're just tired. You're just beat. Um, I would say fit, mentally, yeah. Like I need to to tell stories. You know, I need to I need to be feel like I'm making progress, or I'll just, I will get depressed. Like I I think I'm trying to think of the series. I think after Decay, before Intrusive Thoughts, I was like really depressed. You know, I was like, man, I was like, I, I just felt like stagnant, and I started working on new stuff. Like what keeps me going is like coming up with the ideas writing it getting that feedback you know that's what i love and then once you have to get it drawn then you have to pay for everything yeah before but when you're emotionally invested but not financially invested that's a sweet spot right there how's the support circles been for you in terms of the other creative people that have looked at your work or that you've been able to bounce ideas off of when it comes to uh, being a creative person i feel super lucky man because I, I i i'll, I'll shout out some of the guys uh pat shed who uh is an amazing uh, amazing creator we all know him and he's like I mean, he's like my big brother man i can hit him up about anything and i got richard fairgrave who's my mentor who you know is is on the other side of the spectrum i would say creatively um in terms of is very specific like i would i would say pat is kind of broad not in a bad way but i think that's kind of the brand right and then Richard is like more, you know, you know Richard. Yeah, he's more specific. He's like, I wouldn't say niche, but more so niche. Um, I got my boy Chris Moses, who I've got a couple books coming out with as well, who's like incredible. No, I feel like my network is is fantastic. I wouldn't I wouldn't be half the creator I am without like some of the, some of those guys. Yeah, and they're all talented in their own rights as well too. Richard has been on the show multiple times, over almost three hundred yeah. books now, I think, something like that. And Pat Chan's okay. name has floated around for for a long time as well too. I've had a lot of other guests that have come on the show that said they spoke to Pat Chan for like ten minutes, and it just changed their viewpoint of crowdfunding and everything like that. It's just it's amazing, yeah. 
It's bizarre. Yeah, I got like one of the most prolific, uh, prolific creators in. He went out to Vegas for my birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I, I can have his number. I can call him whenever I want. It's a nice. It's, it's amazing. A lot of people don't understand the the creative side of things. Where where we're so in a bubble when it comes to whatever we're doing, that to reach out to ask for help to get a support system like like what you have and like what we have socially online is a necessary not evil but it's just necessary because <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it can be evil depends on what you're talking about but i mean when it comes yeah. to being creative in general like if we don't bounce ideas off each other if we don't talk things out it's very difficult for us in some way shape or form because we can get into laws and we can get into just destructive thoughts that just don't help us uh, as people or as creative people yeah, I have a lot of stuff I need to work on and, and they've all kind of helped me individually with in, in, in certain aspects. And um, no, I mean, it's just, it's essential to do this stuff alone. You can't really get better in a vacuum, you know, in my opinion. You need people that push me and they push me, you know. I, I, sometimes I don't even like it. Oftentimes I don't like it. But, you know, like I'd rather have that than, you know, no help. And then what do you know where are you at? Have you done any hot takes recently that uh, we're not aware of? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've been, I've been, my friend, my, my friend Chris just told me, he's like, man, you need to, you need to get back on your heel turn stuff. I said manga is better than Western comics. I said that, I said like, on the whole, I think it's better. And that that's always, a, uh, you know, people get really angsty or frustrated with that conversation. But I mean, to me, we can compare two different things all the time. Like if I said movies are better than TV, nobody would throw a hissy fit, you know? So why, why did, if I said Marvel's better than DC, nobody would blink twice, but you compare these two i think the problem is people say like oh they're they're all comics and you're you're right in a sense like for sure like they're not i'm not trying to gatekeep i think from a gatekeeper perspective yeah it is it is whack to compare the two but i'm talking about in terms of quality and what one does better than the other then i would say manga is definitely w way better like if i'm sitting down to read something if all comics are comics i'm i'm picking manga like nine times out of ten and when i'm reading a comic oftentimes it's for research purposes or it's to like understand the medium better but i'm reading the manga because like oh wow this is really good like this is a great story etc it, it feels way more autorish and you know it's not a perfect industry for sure it's a very flawed industry but i truthfully believe having one person work on one thing sometimes it's the same artist sometimes it's the same like and you you're in that headspace and i feel for western writers because in america specifically like you have to work on multiple titles you can't devote i mean even me like i'm working on at least seven titles at least seven like i can't put the same amount of attention detail that i do you know just working on one so i can't imagine you know like a james tinian having to work on x amount of books and they you're you're under way more scrutiny you know like i can't imagine like it's not easy but that's also the benefit of of the of the, of the manga as well yeah i, I mean yeah, plus if you're looking at it from an art to artistic perspective or even from a writing perspective to see the arcs to see the flows there's just something about about the manga creators because they're so invested as as you mentioned as they're so invested in the story in the characters in the arc i've been reading a ton on uh, online as well too and just random things from from isekai to uh, action to adventure to um, whatever and it's just amazing just to see your character interactions because there's a little more freedom i think from from an eastern uh, philosophy when it comes to their style and their creation and their arcs. While a lot of it is formulaic, just it just works. It's very rare that I will pick up a popular manga and be like, I don't understand the appeal mm -hmm. at all. Like, what the hell are you talking about? There will be some, even ones I don't like, will, will there will be something that pulls at me to keep reading. And then for a lot of American comics, it's like, it's not the same. It's, it's not. It's it's almost the opposite. Where I'm like, I'm like struggling, and I'm not trying to uh, dump on all what you know Western comics, but it's something about. It's just something about it that's just easier for me to. And I am biased. I grew up on. I grew up on manga, but I make comics. You know, like I yeah. So like I said, people get 
people get annoyed, but you know, who cares? There, it's always the people that are always getting like the most offended, or, or I don't want to say offended, like <laughs> the people that are getting the most up in arms. I'll say they're never creators. Never. There, it's always somebody who. I said, I said the uh, the college dropouts got real frustrated with that tweet. Like, it's it's always an underachieving individuals that feel like they have the loudest voice. Because if you are a creator, you can at least maybe see where I'm coming from. And then if you if you don't do anything, you're a do nothing which a lot of people on Twitter are. And then I, I'm, I, you know, I don't know if this is wrong or right, but I will point out that like, yo, you're doing nothing with your life. You're, you're saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Disagree. You know, <laughs> See, like, this, let's not go there, you know? So that, that's, that's where we're at. Top three manga that you can always go back to and three, under, mm. and three underrated mangas that should be read. Let me, okay. Let me do my top three favorite manga. I'm going to say Rama one half, Fire Punch, mm-hmm. and I think Don to Don is, is is great. That's going to blow up real soon. Underrated, I'm going to say Shaman King. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Rama One Half, and oh man, I'm going to say I think Blue Lock is really good too. Yeah. I think Blue Lock is underrated. Underrated. Blue Lock is definitely like. It has a lot of tropes. It has a lot of the tropes I don't like, but it's what I like about the modern manga is it's it's I think this is also something that <laughs> I think this is also something that manga does better. Like when you look at a, a Western comics a lot of the time, do you look at like the, the evolution of it? One, it's kind of cyclical, I think. And then a lot of it is just being meta. It's like be, being ve- very on the nose, you know, like the Josh Whedonism and stuff like that. But when you look at manga, like the newer generation of creators, they are using the language and the established formulas from like, I I read a lot of Shonen from Shonen and they're just making it better. Like they're just skipping, they're cutting out so much fluff. They're cutting out so much redundancy and blue lock to me is like, it's like, it's like blue lock and Kaju number nine. I think like, I don't know how if you so much of this pacing is faster so much is happening fast because we understand the medium if you took that away and and you had to show to somebody that never read a shonen or like i don't know like the big three didn't exist i feel like these stories are like just okay like i feel like my hero as well but it's like because they're smart and because the creators are really smart and they understand structure and they understand the pitfalls they grew up on manga you know um, they read Berserk. They read Yu Hakusho. I feel like they know to to avoid certain pitfalls. Certain pitfalls that I feel like Western comics like will dive head head first in. I don't mean pacing in terms of release. I mean pacing in terms of all right. If you look at like the boys, yeah. right? Like the boys is established. It, it, it's almost uh, invincible in the boys. It's based almost like canonized. Like it's almost Marvel and DC canonized. And that's kind of what I mean. And that's a that's a good example. We're gonna use the iconography of Superman to tell a really interesting story that we're all, we're going to recontextualize iconography um, and make it, and make it really interesting. Um, Even if you look at like something like Ant-Man, the movie, like it's playing on a lot of tropes that were established by superhero movies. Um, Even Iron Man, even Iron Man one. So it's, that's what I mean. It's like kind of being smart, and then they've replaced the smartness and like the sub- subversiveness with quips and like meta meta humor. In, in, in my opinion, it, it's not everything. Like, but that's a lot. When you look at the difference, um, for me, that's a lot. And and like, I don't think Shonen. I mean, I don't think the stuff I read it doesn't get very meta, but it will it will be smart about it. Like Chainsaw Man specifically. Chainsaw Man is almost a parody of like superhero. Anyway, look, that, that's a whole other wormhole. But that, that's what I mean. I don't. I mean, pacing in terms of like, I, I you, the audience understands the rules of shonen. I don't have to explain as much. Whereas it feels like Western comics, it's still very exposition heavy. Not a lot. Ha- it, it like if you read a comic, not a lot of plot happens in the comic books, in my opinion. Like it, it, it feels very like, almost like two things happen in a twenty page comic book. You know, as opposed to, you know, yeah. 
perfect. Like I, this is what I wanted to get. <laughs> this, this works out well. <laughs> we gotta have a you time or die. We can. I'll, I'll bring a bunch of hot takes preemptively, and then we can just we can just go. We'll do like a this one really grinds my gears. Oh, cool. oh yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna definitely go dive into the the wrestling rabbit hole of of e, AEW versus WWE versus ECW versus WWE. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into all that next next time you're around for sure. We'll we'll go into some hard hitting favorite wrestlers of the decades and least favorites and all that other stuff. It'll be a hot take wrestling episode for sure. I'm with it. Awesome. Well, Anthony, I do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. No, thanks for having me, man. We always have a good time. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is this amazing Kickstarter campaign and anything else you'd like to promote? If you search uh, and choose thoughts issue two on Google, um, Kickstarter, it'll, it'll pop up. Um, and then I'm on Twitter at Stokes the writer. And then on Instagram, Instagram.com forward slash the K comic and blue and blue sky and blue sky at Stokes the writer. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. Since the website is going through an update, as it always is, go to our YouTube channel. That's a lot more updated, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. Make sure you subscribe and like and everything like that and share some of these amazing interviews, including anthony's past interview as well too the podcast is back of course you can find that at two geeks talking podbe.com or wherever you get your podcast just search for two geeks talking and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking <laughs>